let's run a chi-squared goodness of fit test. So quickly take a read of this. We actually didn't do this in the first semester. We didn't have time. But my other classes in different years did a little M&M activity. All right, and so what we're going to do is we're going to imagine that we go to Target, Walmart, CVS, Walgreens. I don't know where you get your candy from, but wherever you get your candy. All right, and we have a pretty large bag of M&Ms. 335 M&Ms is pretty large. All right, and this is how many of each color that we see. So this is our observed data. All right, so imagine like opening the bag, sorting them into colors. Does anybody do that before they eat them? No? Oh, just me? Okay. And then <laughs> we want to see, does this actual data fit what the company is saying the percentages should be? All right, so here's what we're expecting, these percentages for these colors, and here's what we're actually getting. So literally, all we're going to do is ask ourselves, is this a good fit to our model? All right, that's it. Now, the nice thing about this is you don't actually have to do any parameters. All right, so I know every time we've done a test, I've made a big deal about make sure you define the parameter or parameters if there's two. But in this case, you don't actually have to do a parameter. All right, and your hypotheses will be a sentence, not symbols. All right, so I know you guys are saying earlier uh, today how you wanted to do more writing. So here you go, we get a chance to do more writing. Yeah, something like that. that's what I took away. Okay, so here's the null. The null is that the color distribution of our M&Ms matches the stated model. All right, so we always assume for the null hypothesis here that our actual data is a good fit. That's what we're assuming. All right, we're assuming it fits. Okay, so the alternative is going to be that it is not a good fit. So the color distribution of our M&Ms does not match the stated model. Okay. Now, it's not important right now because we're only doing the goodness of fit test today, but as we move later in this week and doing the other tests, this is going to be one categorical variable right, with a certain number of categories. So my first thought is, whenever I'm trying to figure out which one it is, is do I have more than one categorical variable? Today the answer will be no. All right? We have one categorical variable, that's the M&Ms. And what are the categories? The colors. All right? So that's kind of the dead giveaway will be a goodness of fit test. Okay, so let's get to the assumptions and conditions. And you can tell that we've moved into the end of the year because I am making you write less. I'm putting some stuff here already. Okay, so we have the independence assumption again, right? That's not going anywhere. So we're hoping that the, um, when I pull one M&M out and put it to the side, will that affect the rest of my M&Ms? The answer is yes, right? Because we have a finite number of M&Ms. But that's why we do this 10% condition here at a moment. And as long as that we have more than, all right, 10 times our sample size, it's okay that we're kind of violating that independence assumption. Okay? Now, does it say anything about random? I don't think it did, right? So imagine you're going to whatever store or wherever you get your M&Ms from and you pull one off the shelf or whatever. Is that going to be random? What do you think? What if yeah. you got a bag that was like only red? Oh my you gosh. Can, but you can determine beforehand. 
I don't really know a whole lot about how they put the M&Ms in the bag, but I imagine it's a machine. I imagine the machines are doing it randomly. So in my mind, yes, it will be random. All right. Do I know for sure? I definitely do not. Because what if somebody's like, <laughs> let's make them all red. Or what if you end up getting one that is like, you know, they do like holiday ones. that are different colors. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you're going to get more red if it's a Christmas one, right? Just red and green. So you got to be careful with what type it is. But if it's your run of the mill, you know, <laughs> I think peanut M&Ms are terrible. So if it was chocolate M&Ms, no, usually I get people that are like upset that I say that. You guys agree? Totally agree. I love it. All right. Oh, gosh, so gross. Okay. I love peanuts. I love chocolate. Not together. Okay. So what do we have to say if it doesn't say random? You remember our statement? Yes. What up? See, were you doing stats every day over break? No. No? Oh, my gosh. I saw a confidence interval yesterday on my TV. I know. I was like, oh, my gosh. I should show my student. Um, if you remind me, I will. Oh, well, I recorded it. So I was watching a, the Formula One race yesterday. Or actually, I was watching qualifying on Saturday. Oh! Oh, did they send me a chat? Oh, yeah. They, they did. Excellent. I was watching qualifying on Saturday. All right. And as they were doing it, as they were doing it, um, it put in like the very end of the session of qualifying what they expected the knockout time to be. So it said the expected knockout time was like a minute 30 plus or minus 0.2 seconds. I was like, oh my gosh, that's a confidence interval. Oh, Maybe so happy. All right. So these, I think it's 335, right? Yeah. M&Ms are a good representation of all M&Ms. Roll right into the 10% condition. What do we do with our sample size of 335? Excellent. So that would be 3,350. Do they make more than 3,350 M&Ms? Have, have you eaten more than 3,350 M&Ms? I definitely have. They're delicious. Oh, Thomas. I'm just, I feel sad for you. And this condition at the end of this page is just to make sure, hey, before you move forward, is this a categorical variable? All right. Yes. Right. We just have different categories here for colors. We're just counting no units. Yeah, Thomas. So the content data condition is like thing that the dash. Like, yeah, this is like a bullet, bullet and, point. Thank you. We just say like, yes, the colors are. Uh, yeah, just say that this is a categorical variable with however many categories. In this case, six categories okay. by color. Leslie, do you have a question? Okay. Honestly, you don't have to check that. That's more of like just for your brain of like, hey, am I doing the right thing? Because if it's quantitative, should not be doing this, right? If you can see a unit, right? Remember like last uh, unit, we had all the, every single test we did had units. It was an average, a mean, right? In this case, there's no units. Okay. The sample size assumption. So 335 is a large enough sample. So this is back. I know you missed it. And then normally when we did this for proportions, we did the N times P, N times Q, the success failure condition. Notice that's not happening here, but I put a little uh, bullet point here to show you what we're about to do is essentially the same thing. All right, this is the expected cell frequency condition. We have to check to make sure that all of our expected values for each of these categories is five or more. All right, so very similar to the whole idea of 10 or more. Okay, now here's where I wanna actually turn on the calculator and type in the data. So if you don't have a calculator, make sure you get one. All 
All right, so you want to go to stat and edit. Now we're going to type in our actual data for these different colors into list one. All right, so I see that red was 57. So I'm going to type 57 right there. Okay. Then I'm going to type in blue is 79. Keep going until you've done all six. 75 for orange. Green is 57. Yellow, 41. And brown, 26. All right, so always put your observed data, your actual data values in list one. Okay, now move to list two. All right, now if all of the percentages were the same, we could do this in one fell swoop, but since they're not, we gotta do each one of this at, at, at once, or I should say one at a time. So the first color here was red. And what does the model say, like the company states, what percentage should you expect of your M&Ms to be red? 13%, right? So you're going to type in this cell, right? 335, that's how many we have, right? 335 times 0.13. And it will do the expected value for you. Is that five or more? Yes, so we're good there. So I just want to just have my antenna up if any are very small, essentially. All right, do the next one. Blue. Blue was 24%. That's what we're expecting. So 335 times 24%, so 0 0.24. Again, that's even higher. Keep going. Orange is 20%. So 335 times 0.2. And then we have green, 335 times 0.16. Yellow, 14%. And then finally, brown was the same as red, 13%. Now, while you're typing that in, if you haven't done it already, make sure you do it because we need both of these columns to actually run our test in the calculator. So type them in. While you do that, I'm going to just put a little table here to the side. Where I put my expected values. So here's color. And here's expected value. So the thing that they might get you on the AP exam is they need to know that you actually did it. And you can't just say, I typed it into the calculator. So you need to make a quick little table to show that you actually did it and write the numbers. All right, so what was the first one? Was it red? Yeah. And it was 40, I already forgot, 45, I guess I can pull up my calculator. 43, 43. 0.55, and then we had blue, was that 80.5? Thank you. Then we had orange, orange, you glad to see me? Orange, 67. Then green, thank you. Yellow, and I believe brown is the same as red. All right, so some way to make that table where you're showing the AP scores that you actually checked the condition. All right, so all of our conditions have been satisfied. So we're ready for that statement. I know you've done this statement, gosh, for months. You've got it memorized. All right, the conditions have been satisfied.
So I will use, all right, so remember, so far we've done the normal model. We just finished up using the T model. And now your third one, the chi-squared model. Chi -squared, the goodness of it is the name of the test. The chi-squared model. So use the chi-squared model. Oh my gosh, there's degrees of freedom with... So the degrees of freedom that you know, or, or at least the simple one from last unit, was sample size minus one. We're not doing that for this one. It's going to be number of categories minus one. So how many different colors were there? Six. six. So six minus one will be five. To run a goodness of fit test. Oh my gosh, well done guys, not even halfway. You're doing awesome. Just think like in another uh, six weeks, you'll be doing this type of test in under 15 minutes. Now, the nice thing about the chi-squared model is that this is actually one of the formulas that the AP exam gives you. All right, so I put it on the next slide. Well, this formula is actually from the AP exam. All right, so that's nice. I used to, when I had to memorize this in high school, the way I did it was, I know this is a long time ago, so maybe you've not seen it. That's okay, I'm gonna go for it. It's my mom's favorite movie. Have you seen The Wizard of Oz? Well, I mean, Solomon Wizard of Oz. I know there's lots of different ones. Very good. So the same with my mom when they had like one movie came on you know, back in the 50s and 60s. All right. Now, do you remember the guards that would say, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, over and over again? Okay. So instead of doing, I know it's not the right sound, but instead of oh, e, o, you're going to go oh, e, e. That's how I memorized it in high school. You can also do this one, which if you watch my video, it's pretty obnoxious, but you can also just go, oh, e, e. You could do that too. That works too. Whatever way you're going to memorize. But even though I'm telling you to memorize it, you don't need to memorize it because they give it to you. But I just, you know, I like to memorize things. Yeah. Is that a little bit better? Third time? Let's wait. Let's, let's do it. All right. So here we go. Let's start with the red. Red was 57. We actually picked out of our bag. So we're going to do 57 minus the expected value. And you can refer to your table or go to your calculator. Turn it on if it went off. And the expected value was 43.6 squared divided by that expected value. Now, why do you think we need to square it, that numerator? For fun. For fun. I mean, I'm having fun, Thomas, so I'm glad you are, too. Any thoughts? Okay, let's hold off. We don't know yet. Let's keep going. Maybe it'll, like, come up. All right? Let's do blue. Wait. Le blue, yeah. Does it have to do with variances? No, but you could answer the question with variances, but no. 80.4. Wow, look how we were so close on blue. Do you guys see how we were really close? Oh, interesting, because what happened with the blue numerator? That's going to be negative. So if I start adding positive and negatives, I'm going to start canceling myself out. So how do we avoid that? We square it, which is kind of how we did variance. So that's what I was saying. You could answer it that way. <laughs> Orange. 75. I know you're already thinking, Mr. Frandrick, do I need to show all this work on the AP exam? What's the answer? No, you don't. But there could be a multiple choice question that asks you to do the, the algebra here. So I need to show you, even if you're bored. Green, 57 minus 
Yellow, 41. If I was really on my game, I would use different colors. That's okay. First day back, right, Eduardo? 26. For, not for me? You think I was teaching all break? I wasn't. Oh, man. Tried to keep Henry from using a screen. That's pretty much that was my only goal. Lots of yard work. Got our generator put in. Very excited. Super excited. The next hurricane hits, then I'll be excited. All right. Well, I mean, <laughs> I'm just saying, not excited. You know what I mean? I'll be happy that I have a generator, not actually happy. Okay. Now you can do all this by hand. I ah, please don't, right? That's why we have the technology. So let's let the computer do this for us. Okay. So let's go to our calculator. Hopefully you've got your list one and list two. Remember, list one needs to be your, I mean, it doesn't need to be, you can change it in your thing, which is easier if your list one is your actual values, your observed data, and list two is what we expect to happen, okay? So I'm going to go to stat, over to tests, and I'm going to do the chi-squared goodness of fit test. It's way down there. It's letter D. We'll be using letter C tomorrow and Thursday. So G-O-F, goodness of fit test. Hopefully you've got your list one and list two is right. I'm going to pop up here. There you go. Observed is list one. Expected list two. What does it say for your degrees of freedom? Five. It says five. Okay, so that's right. And we're going to hit calculate. No, it's the number of categories minus one. No, no, I mean like that probably It probably just knows that you typed in six numbers. All right, so you can see the chi-squared goodness of fit test statistic, which is what I care about, is 13.164. I'm going to put that here. So this is like your Z-score. This is like your T-value from the last unit, right? So you've got to get your test statistic. And every time we get this, it should always be what accompanied with it. Whenever you have a, a test statistic, you shall also have what next to it? A p-value. Always a p-value when you're running a test. So I think I actually have the next page. Rather, p-value, which is? I'm going to do 0 0.022. All right, I'm going to draw that curve. You don't know what it looks like. I can go do it again if you want to see what it looks like. I know, Catherine, you've done this a few times with the draw. You can see what it looks like. Essentially, when you draw the chi-squared model, and I'll show you more, like, a kind of what happens when you change the degrees of freedom, just always draw a curve that's skewed to the right, okay? So when you draw it, draw a curve that's skewed to the right. Like that. So 13 is over here. All right, and I know... You're like, wait, Mr. Frender, how do you know where to shade? It will always be shaded in the right tail. Chi squared is always shaded in the right tail. So I don't need to worry about, oh, is it one tail, two tail? Always shaded in the right tail. Always, 100%. All right, so what do you guys think with this p value? We reject this null. I agree. I think it's a pretty small p value. So I'm going to reject the null. So what am I saying about our. M&Ms that we actually have. That it is different from the expected value. Very good. I'm going to say that it is not a good fit for the stated percentages from the company. So RP value is below 0.05. So I will reject the null in favor of the alternative. And just another kudos to you guys. Very few students had issues with this linkage on the last test. So you definitely have been working hard trying to figure this out. So good job for you guys. Our M&Ms are not a good fit for the 
companies stated percentages. Now I'll show you one more thing. You don't actually have to know this for this problem, but sometimes on the AP exam in the multiple choice question, they'll, they'll throw something in about chi-squared and they might ask you for the individual component values that got the chi-squared of 13.164, right? Because remember, I showed you all the work, but we didn't actually write any of the numbers, right? But you have to sum all of those to get that 13.164, all right? Here's what I mean, right? Remember, this summation symbol means we actually have to take each individual one and add them together. So if you go back to your calculator, and you, if you didn't do anything, you still have it, but I need to do it again. And if you do this, and then do you see where it says CNTRB? All right, so these are the each individual component. So do you see that 4.1539 number? That 4.153 number, or 1539 number is for red. All right, and if you hit the arrow to the right, wait for it. If you have the arrow to the right, it will move this and you can see all the different ones. So the next one I'm going to write is point zero two zero two four four. And you don't have to do this. I'm just showing you, you might need to know this on the AP exam. Now I've got point nine five five. And I got 0 0.216, 0.742. And the last one, which was, was it brown? 7.072, wow, look at brown. So the question that they might ask on the AP exam, and even maybe on the free response is, which color or colors is driving this 13.164? I would say definitely brown, right? That's over half of the chi-squared value is made up by this brown chi-squared value. And then the red as well. And if you add those together, you're already over 11. Okay, so these in the middle, the blue, orange, green, and yellow are not really doing a whole lot for us. Right? Yeah, they're adding a little bit to it, but it's definitely brown and then red. And you can see, why is that? We got less brown than we thought, and we got more red than we expected as well. Okay? So that the larger the difference in the numerator, whether it's going to be a positive or negative, is going to drive that chi-squared value. Yes, Eduardo? Is the x squared all of them? Yes. If you were to add all those up, that's chi-squared. All right.